Hi, welcome back to EducateTube.com. My name is Sitsuki, your host. In this video, I want to talk about why I purchased a lithium ion phosphate battery and other components to make my own DIY power station instead of buying a portable power station that has everything. Let's talk about it right now. All right, before I begin, I want to thank Abby for donating his video equipment to this channel. Thank you, Abby, for donating your video equipment to this channel. You can check his video, YouTube video here. His video channel is called Abby Uncle. You can have a look at that. All right, so let's begin with these components. Now, normally, you know, when you're uh, wanting power, you would buy this portable power station. I actually got this, but this is a broken unit. I bought it for the battery itself. I, I purchased it for about $150. It is broken, right? So I end up using the battery inside the lithium ion phosphate. That's what I want it for. So that's brought me to the point where should I buy a portable power station or should I buy different components and put it together to make my DIY power station? My final decision was actually to get different components and put it together. And the reason for that is because of what just happened here is that if one of the components fail, well, then you have no power station, right? So this is why you need to purchase uh, three main components in order to build your DIY power station. The first component, of course, is the battery cell. I got this lithium ion phosphate battery, 1280 watt hour for around, it was on sale for around uh, $250. Then you have to purchase this uh, power inverter. This is a 1500 watt power station. It's pretty heavy and big. The peak charge, I think is 3000 watt. Power, but, but the continue power is 1500 watt. Okay, that's the second point. The third component, of course, you need a charger. So I got this Noco Genius 10. This allows you to charge not just um, lithium ion phosphate or lithium ion batteries, but also you can charge a lead acid battery as well. So very useful. And that brings me to why I did that, right? So think about this. If one of these three components breaks down, you can actually buy it by itself. Now you add these three components together, it only cost me 600 versus if I buy a new uh, power station, it cost me $700. So I made a saving of $100. Now, $100 may not be a lot. Of course, the convenience of buying a power station, a portable one, is that you have every component in one and it's easy to carry around. Whereas if you buy mm -hmm. uh, three components here, you have to carry it in separate uh, boxes or you have to bring all three together. But of course, the advantage is that if any of these breaks down, you can always replace it. If the battery breaks down, you can buy that. It's only going to cost you two hundred dollars or two fifty. If this breaks down, this a uh, power inverter, you can purchase that for around two hundred dollars. If this uh, charger breaks down, you you can just replace it. It costs you one hundred fifty dollars. And the cool part is that you can buy several of this battery, and let's say you use this battery up, and you can uh, recharge it. And while it's recharging, you can use the other battery. So. You can continue on to use your power station if you have two or more of this lithium ion phosphate battery. Because you have the power inverter and you have a charger to charge the battery that's uh, already drained, right? So that's one of the positive reasons why I decided to get uh, three different components to build my own lithium ion phosphate power station. The second part is the fact that if I decided to charge, let's say, not lithium ion phosphate battery, I can charge my uh, lead acid battery. There it is, I have this charger that can be used for other type of batteries. Let's say if I have other type of battery like lead acid battery and I want to use that, I can use my power inverter to convert that into a useful power. So you can see that having three components, it can be used for other type of batteries, it can be used for charging other type of battery as well. So many reason why it is better to have it separately. And if any of the component breaks down, you can replace one of them. And in that situation, you're saving a lot of money and you're not wasting, basically it's more environmentally friendly way of uh, using your power station. In fact, very, very practical. I'm gonna show you right now that I can actually use a very power hungry, uh, device, for example, a microwave oven. I can use these uh, three components, put it together, and pretty power up my microwave machine so I can have my hot coffee. But I would recommend that for portable power station, 
try not to use a uh, power hungry type of device like microwave because I don't know uh, whether that's good for the battery because when I did try this uh, I noticed that the two terminal gets really hot okay when it was using a thousand watt hour and uh, it was heating up my coffee for a couple of minutes it, it was yeah it was really hot and so I would say that if you're going to use that kind of uh, machine that uses a lot of power just use it for short duration so you wouldn't um, destroy your battery or your uh, inverter or your charger the portable power station I think they also have the same problem and this is why you need to be aware of that for like small devices like charging a smartphone for maybe running a fan or anything less than 500 watt hour system I think is okay but anything above let's say you know 800 to a thousand watt hour machine it's gonna really stress your uh, battery system okay so just be aware of that at least I know because I was able to test it out and you know uh, feel for it right and I noticed that yeah it gets really hot in the terminal and I can see why some of these power station can fail if they're using it uh, like say powering microwave oven and uh, power tools all right so have a look at the video now that I'm going to show you how I hook up my microwave oven all right so here I'm going to power my microwave oven this is actually an RV type of microwave oven the maximum uh, surge is about 950 watt and so when it runs continuously around 900 to 950 watt so make sure you check your specs on your microwave oven uh, make sure it doesn't go over a thousand watt especially if your battery cannot handle it or if your power inverter may not be able to go above let's say a thousand watt hour okay so just be aware of that just check whether it has a surge output and that can uh, make your power inverter not working so thank goodness this is an RV microwave oven and so the maximum surge and output is around 950 watt okay uh, I would recommend to get a, even a smaller microwave oven that runs between 600 to 800 watt hour but here we go so what you need to do first is to connect your power inverter to your battery so the positive okay make sure you don't short anything this is a very expensive equipment so you take the negative terminal and the positive terminal there we go okay now normally I would secure these cable I just want to show you quickly uh, don't wasting anybody's time here okay but generally you want to make sure you secure this cable so that it isn't short all right turn on your um, actually before you do that make sure you plug your microwave or any power a machine that uses a lot of power or power tools plug that in there we go and let's turn it on there we go you can see I have uh, 13.9 or point well between 13.8 now uh, volt it's running on a AC because it converts the DC to AC 116 volt and the battery is full as you can see there now let me uh, turn uh, the microwave on for about 30 seconds and it will work perfectly watch this okay so there we go it's working cool so I don't want to stand here too long I don't want uh, the radiation come close to me but you can see that it's uh, working really really well and here you have the battery and phosphate battery hooked up to the power inverter 1500 watt power and then of course the microwave is working really well now it gets really hot on the terminal so like I said, don't uh, use it too long. I would say maximum uh, five minutes each time and let it rest. Otherwise, I don't know how it would affect the battery because the battery gets really hot, at, at least at the terminal part, right? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a little heart of appreciation. Bye.